Scanning and Information Gathering section. In this section, we're going to be covering scanning with Metasploit. We're going to be gathering extra information and using other tools that are part of your information security suite, so to speak, that will augment what is in Metasploit. That would include things like Nmap, Nessus, and Nexpos, to name a few. This way, you can actually take scans that you've done with other tools and either import them into Metasploit to use as part of your exploit foundation, or you can actually bridge between Metasploit and those scanning type technologies to pull in vulnerabilities. So let's go ahead and get started. Scanning with Metasploit. There are a number of scanners that are underneath, that are contained within Metasploit. They can be found underneath the auxiliary forward slash scanner folder in your installation. Some of those scanners are going to include port scan and DNS, MS SQL, and RDP. Contained within those scans, there are other scans that you can actually run. For instance, underneath the port scan, you can actually just run a SYN scan where it will just send out SYN requests. Or you could run something like a Christmas tree scan or run a full scan for every port that's available within the spectrum. So there are a number of scans that, you, that exist as part of the specific scan categories that you have. To use Metasploit as a scanner, you're going to have to launch MSF Console. Once the console actually comes up, you're going to want to go ahead and load up a scanner. To do that, you're going to use auxiliary forward slash scanner forward slash the scanner type forward slash the scanner name. An example of this might be use auxiliary forward slash scanner forward slash smb forward slash smb underscore enum shares or enumerate shares. What this particular scanner does is it actually scans Windows machines looking for available shares that you might be able to leverage either via exploit or some other type of activity. Once you actually have a scanner loaded, you're going to want to know what options are available to you or what options you might have to set in order for the scanner to work correctly. In order to do that, you're going to want to show them. So use the command show options and hit enter and this will display the specific scanner options that you, some are required and some are accessories that you don't have to necessarily set. So in this case, uh, we're going to look at our host, which is a pretty common one that you have to set on almost all scanners or almost all things that have to do with Metasploit because that stands for remote hosts or the host that you actually want to scan. In this case, we're looking at set our host 192.168.1.0 forward slash 24. What this means is that it's going to actually scan an entire subnet range. You could have also changed that and done uh, set our host and a specific IP address, and that would have only scanned one host that's in there. So now that we've got kind of an idea of that, let's take a look at what some of that might look like. Opening up a command prompt, we're going to go ahead and see where some of that auxiliary stuff exists. So if you're on a Linux machine, you will go to cd forward slash opt forward slash metasploit dash framework, then forward slash embedded, then forward slash framework, forward slash modules and forward slash auxiliary. You're going to get in that directory and you do a directory listing and you can see here's some of the auxiliary pieces that you can use, but we're more interested right now in scanners. So we're going to CD again into scanners and list out our scanners that are there. So you can see there's a bunch of them that are there. You've got UDP, SSL, finger FTP, RDP. There's a number of ones that you're, you have there. So we're going to see again to port scan and list what ones we have there. And you can see we have ACK, FTP bounce, SYN, XMAS scan, and we're going to actually take a look at one of these. So let's look at the SYN scan. So if we cat that out to the screen, you'll see what an actual exploit looks like. And you see it has a title of it. It also will have, in the, you can see in the middle there, some of the things that were required that were actually to be set. And it's basically just a Ruby script. So let's go ahead and clear that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and launch our MSF console so that we can actually leverage one of these. So give that a second for the console to go ahead and start. Now we're going to go ahead and actually load up our scanner. 
and we'll do that by going use and then auxiliary forward slash scanners or scanner forward slash port scan forward slash sin enter and you can see now that the msf console tells you that it's loaded so now what we want to do is we want to show the options once we hit enter we'll see what the options are we can see that there are several that are required but the big one that we're going to be interested in is our hosts because our host is going to determine uh, the remote host that we want to scan so like i said before we can set a full ip range like a subnet by doing set our host 192.168.100.0 forward slash say 24 for a whole subnet. It could be a class A, B, or C. But what we're interested in right this minute is showing you actually a scanner working on an individual host. And I know there's one at dot one. So we're going to go ahead and set that. And once you hit enter, you'll see that our host is now set for that. And then we can execute it by earning run. And after a few minutes, what's going to happen is it's going to scan that particular server or whatever it may be at that and start to report back what ports are available to it. And the first one that we see is port 53, commonly associated with DNS. In a moment, we should see another one, and we'll be able to take a look at that one. There it is. It's port 80, which is commonly associated with HTTP or web service type processes. So now that it's kind of completed, what we're going to want to do is now we can take that information and we can leverage it. So we go ahead and we, we could launch MSF console. Or if we, since we were in the console, we could have just pivoted over to it. Let's load up our MSF console. And once it loads up, now what we can do is we can start to leverage what we know about those. So in this case, we know that this has an HTTP process running on it, or what we think it is anyway. So let's identify what that HTTP process is. So you do that by doing use auxiliary scanner forward slash HTTP this time forward slash HTTP version. And that loads up a version scanner for HTTP. Let's see what our options are again. Similar to what we had before, but uh, slightly different. We'll set our, our hosts again to the IP address that we're interested in, 192.168.100.1, and go ahead and set that. And then we can go ahead and execute it. And now what it's going to do is try to fingerprint that specific one, which it comes back pretty quick as light httpd forward slash 1.4.39, where we can now use that as a leveraging point to further exploit this particular system. So now we have an idea of how to actually load up scanners or at least port scanners and be able to use those to begin to gather information for our systems that we want to actually exploit.